nobody can stop you Shoot for the sun and break on through So you're blind, you'll be fine, we got good news You can live the life you want, yes we know the truth Grab a cane, get trained, gotta get moving Make a change and a wage, that's what we're doing Come with me can stop you shoot for the sun and break on through so you're blind you'll be fine we got good news you can live the life you want yes we know the truth you and me and it be let's dream together and it be you and me lives on forever Stop you, shoot for the sun, and break on through. So you're blind, you'll be fine, we got good news. You can live the life you want, yes we know the truth. You can live the life you want, yes we know the truth. Come on, and break on through, yeah. So you're blind, you'll be fine, you got good news. You can live the life you want, yes, we know the truth. Woo, welcome to the Presidential Release Live. That's our leadership seminar, choir. <laughs> My name is Anil Lewis, I'm standing in for Pam Allen. And uh, let me introduce you guys to this wonderful guy. Turn the mic over to our president, Mr. Mark Riccobono. <laughs> Thanks, Anil. You know, that's a uh, different opening than we usually have. So that's, that's great. Well, that's you know, great. guys, switch it up a little yeah, bit because, you know, it's hard to compete with Pam. <laughs> <laughs> we have the uh, 91st uh, Leadership Seminar here at the National Center. So welcome to our audience. <laughs> And Anil, we, we have quite an audience uh, this evening. You may not recognize, but uh, we're, we're actually, I, I didn't tell you this ahead of time because I knew you'd get nervous. Uh-oh. But we're, we're, we're the uh, opening session of the National Federation of the Blind of Arizona Convention, wow. which is happening that? right now. Nice. Uh, the theme of the convention is our movement, our collective story. So uh, hello to the NFB of Arizona. Arizona! <laughs> Wish, uh, wish I could be there in person. There's a newly elected board member there, Donald right, Porterfield, right. running I, things. And they're going to have a, a philosophy discussion after this, so I encourage uh, more chapters and affiliates to think about how to incorporate the live release into their work. Very nice. Uh, so, Anil, you ready to get started? I am ready. Okay, it is sounds, all yours. sounds good. Greetings, fellow Federationists. Today is Thursday, September 1, 2022, and this is presidential release number 519 here from our national headquarters with our 91st leadership seminar in attendance. That was a cue. For <laughs> They're a little slow, you know. <laughs> Um, we, uh, many of us are uh, dealing with back to school, but also the Federation is back to building across the country. Just got back from our first set of fall conventions last weekend, a little ahead of fall, and a lot of great things uh, are happening. Of course, we had a great summer in the National Federation of the Blind, but we are ready for fall where we will be accelerating the pace of progress through in-person meetings and many other activities to build our movement. I have a number of things to share on this release. First, I want to acknowledge that September 
is National Guide Dog Month. And uh, this really is an opportunity for us to kick off our promotion of independent travel and freedom for the blind that's gonna lead us right into Blind Equality Achievement Month in October. Wanna really elevate on this release, our National Association of Guide Dog Users, uh, also known as NAGDU to some. And uh, our division has a great wealth of information and resources on the NAGDU website. That's nagdu.org, N-A-G-D-U.org. Also, our uh, president of NAGDU, Raul Gallegos from Texas, wants me to remind you that a lot of great discussion happens on the NAGDU listserv, which you can find at nfbnet.org. Now, back to school time uh, is uh, always an interesting one. Uh, as a blind parent of three children, uh, two of whom are blind, uh, I know well the difficulties that come with uh, back to school and trying to navigate all of the uh, access to information issues that come up. And of course, that's really on top of all of the normal adjustments that any parent has to make uh, during the back to school process. I wanna remind Federation members, whether you're uh, dealing with the back to school or whether you're supporting folks in your chapter who are dealing with it, the Federation has a number of important resources that can be helpful in this process. On our website at nfb.org, You'll find a bunch of them on our homepage uh, elevated for this back to school time. One of them is a parent's, a blind parent's essential guide to effective communication from public and private schools. You can find that in uh, both English and Spanish. Also, we have the self advocacy and higher education toolkit for our blind students that are navigating. Uh, colleges and universities. And uh, whether you're a parent or a blind student, uh, you can participate in our ongoing efforts to gather information about non-visual uh, access barriers to educational technology. This is our Educational Technology Accessibility Survey which is always available on our website. We try to gather information about uh, educational technologies from kindergarten through graduate school. It's there all the time. We want you to go there uh, every semester or really anytime you're encountering a new educational technology. It's part of our monitoring effort. Let us know what's working and what's not working. Uh, we wanna know both so that we can track the trends and know who to talk to know who to hold up as good examples. We use this in our advocacy work, in our education work, and also sometimes in our legal work. So please go to nfb.org, find that educational tech survey and complete it. Um, I wanna let you know on this release that the uh, work of the federal government, the program to provide free standard COVID tests to Americans, is coming to an end on September 2nd, which is tomorrow. So if you're not tuned into the release live, probably the date will have passed for most of you. However, I do wanna let you know that the uh, number of tests that have been made available for blind people will remain available after September 2nd, assuming that supplies still last. So uh, don't assume just because you've heard that the government program is ended, that there aren't still tests available for blind people. Now, online ordering for the uh, government-sponsored test for blind people was shut down for a short time because, get this, non-blind people were taking the tests. Yeah, but um, the government uh, fixed that. And so the online ordering is now up. And so you can order uh, by calling 1-800-232-0233 or find the online uh, form for the test, COVID tests that are available to blind people. You can find details uh, about the online 
uh, website at nfb.org slash COVID tests, COVID tests, plural. And uh, we'll continue to promote uh, that as long as we know that those tests are available to blind people. We will be working with industry partners and others to find ways to continue to make accessible COVID tests available to blind people across the country. We continue to encourage insurance companies to sponsor uh, accessible COVID testing. And there will certainly be more on this topic uh, from the Federation in the time going forward. Also uh, wanna call out that on our uh, COVID test page, you can find a, a survey there that you can give us feedback and information about your experience with at-home COVID testing. Again, very helpful with our advocacy efforts. The Federation, uh, as part of our diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives, has launched a new web page to uh, centralize some of the resources, articles, and things that our organization is working on in the DEI initiative. This uh, includes the five-year diversity calendar that we made available earlier this year to help uh, chapters and affiliates with planning and avoiding conflicts uh, on certain important holidays. Uh, you can get to the new diversity page by going to the Get Involved section of our website at nfb.org, or you can navigate directly to nfb.org slash DEI and I would certainly encourage you to give feedback to our diversity, equity, and inclusion committee about other resources that we should post there to help build the Federation. You've heard me say a number of times that the Federation is engaging in a strategic planning process during the next year. We are currently in uh, what's called the scan phase. Our strategic planning consultants at Mission Minded are gathering uh, information about the Federation, about the uh, state of affairs across the nation for blind people and the conditions for blind people, conducting a number of telephone interviews and uh, talking with members across the Federation. Uh, Mission Minded as our consultant is working with a steering committee of Federation uh, members that the board has uh, put together that will uh, advise the process and make recommendations to the board. As part of that process, the SCAN process, or what uh, you might think of in traditional uh, strategic planning as the SWOT analysis, we are gonna be conducting a survey. I'm letting you know this uh, now because there's a very tight window on the survey. The survey is going to be running from September 19th through the end of that week, the 25th. So I really uh, am asking you to carve out 15 minutes during that week. And even if you're hearing this release at your chapter meeting then during the fourth Saturday of the month, you still have a day or so to fill out the survey. Carve out 15 minutes to go online and we will be disseminating the uh, survey widely across the NFB listservs, or you can call in on our telephone survey system. Your feedback, your voice is really so valuable in this process and um, uh, would make a big difference if you take the time to fill this survey out. So please plan to do that, plan to be part of it and plan to socialize it with your chapter members, uh, help others in the Federation fill it out who may need assistance. Again, you'll be able to find the link at our website and through email over the coming weeks. But if you need to uh, take it via the telephone, it will be available to everybody at our telephone survey number, which you've heard many times, it doesn't change, 229-632-7877. That's 229-632-7878. If for some reason you do need a toll-free option, that's 833-632-7878. Please fill out the survey and be part of our strategic planning process. 
Now, the uh, United States Senate will be back in session beginning on September 6th and remaining in session for the rest of the month. The U.S. House of Representatives will be back in session beginning September 13th through the end of the month. Uh, this is a great opportunity for you to utilize September to help uh, convince members of Congress to uh, co-sponsor our initiatives. We do believe, we're optimistic that we will see some additional um, bill movement, including introduction of some new bills for us during this month. But the most important thing is that you reach out to members of Congress to get support for our bills. That momentum is going to be really important going into the election in the next Congress. We believe that we have some good opportunities to get at least one of our bills passed before the end of the congressional session. So please keep on the steam, keep holding them accountable and get those co-sponsors in. It is not too late. And if nothing else, we want a good momentum going into the elections and into the next Congress. And speaking of the uh, midterm elections that are uh, happening across the country this November. I want to encourage every member of the National Federation of the Blind to get out and vote. And uh, in getting out to vote, I hope you will also raise uh, concerns about any accessibility barriers you find with your uh, boards of election, work together with your chapters and affiliate to help continue to raise the expectations in voting in your local communities. You can find voting resources at nfb.org slash vote, including a number of videos and other resources we have put together. I encourage chapters to uh, assist blind people in registering to vote. It's really important that we exercise our rights as constituents, that uh, we're visible, and that we help make sure that our priorities are considered by the next group of elected leaders in our nation. I do have a couple of other announcements for this release. Uh, the National Federation of the Blind's Code of Conduct Feedback Committee has been gathering information uh, for improving the participant experience, socializing the code itself, and associated procedures and identifying barriers in, or, in an effort to understand how to improve the policies and standards that we establish for our community. If you didn't get an opportunity to connect with the committee earlier this summer during the convention, there are several upcoming fall opportunities to do so. A couple to call to your attention on this release. On September 18th, the committee will be hosting an information session with Tanya Banya. She is our external investigator for the Federation's Code of Conduct process. You can find the Zoom details at our website, nfb.org, for the September 18th event. Also, uh, in October, there will be uh, a survey uh, being offered by the committee to gather some data and some additional office hours to hear from you. Now, the Federation, uh, while Congress has not been se in session. We've been working not only on our legislative priorities, but also commenting on a number of federal regulatory issues. And you can find uh, comments that we post uh, on uh, regulatory issues on our website. On August 8th, 2022, we submitted formal comments to the Federal Communications Commission these comments had to do with uh, the commission's uh, requirement that it submit a biannual report to Congress, and we provided feedback on uh, that report, which relates to the 21st century 
Communications and Video Accessibility Act. Again, you can find those comments on the Federation's website uh, where we list uh, all of our policy statements, so our policy statements page. Also, uh, on August 19th, we submitted comments to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Uh, these comments were related to uh, petitions submitted by Ford and General Motors as it relates to the research and development of automated vehicles. Obviously, autonomous vehicles are something that presents a great opportunity for equal access for blind people. And so the Federation has weighed in on these important uh, exemptions that have been requested by car companies. Our Center for Non-Visual Access Group here at the National Office is conducting a number of trainings in September that I wanted to call to your attention on this release. Uh, two events in particular uh, for September. On September 14th, a half-day seminar will be held on web accessibility testing from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, the seminar will cover both automated and manual testing and discuss several tools that will facilitate making uh, websites accessible. On September 27th, an accessibility boutique will be covering Office 365 online. The group will be discussing the web-based versions of Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, and provide tips for using them effectively with screen reading technologies. You can find information about uh, our a center of Excellence activities and register for them by going to nfb.org slash CENA, C-E-N-A, nfb.org slash CENA. Um, final announcement is I want to welcome to our Dream Maker Circle. This is hot off the presses just uh, earlier today. Our Dream Maker Circle is uh, our commitment program where people can uh, pledge an end of life gift to the National Federation of the Blind to make as part of their legacy, the continued work of our movement. I want to welcome Barbara Ann Keen and Richard McDougall Keen from Silver Spring, Maryland to the Dream Maker Circle. Thank you for being the latest contributors to make a commitment to the Federation going forward. I do have a number of Federation family notes to share with you on this release. I'm sorry to have to let you know of the passing of Wiley Smith of Pennsylvania, also known to Federationists as Buck. This announcement comes from Jim Antonacci, who shares that Buck passed away on Wednesday, July 27th. Uh, Jim reports that Buck was 88 years of age, and uh, he describes uh, Buck as the oldest continuous active member of the NFB of Pennsylvania. He uh, shares that uh, uh, Buck was a wealth of information about the uh, earliest days of the NFB. He actually uh, did meet and spend time with the first president of the Pennsylvania Federation of the Blind. And he also attended the NFB National Convention that was held in Philadelphia in uh, the 1960s. Um, he was one of the founding members of the Keystone chapter of the NFB of Pennsylvania, 
And uh, I, I think a really important note, uh, Jim says that uh, Buck uh, always did serve his part in any capacity he could find. Although he did not serve in a leadership role as an elected officer, he was the first to jump up to be on a picket line or to stuff envelopes. There was no job in the Federation that was beneath him. And uh, he uh, was a continuous member uh, participating where he could up until the last 12 months of his life when his health prevented him from participating. I would urge you to keep uh, Buck's uh, friends and family, especially uh, Patricia, his uh, partner of 35 years or so in your thoughts and prayers. From Utah, Everett Bacon reports the passing of Tracy McDonald of our Red Rocks chapter, who passed away on August 21st. Uh, she was only 50 years old. From Missouri, we received news of the passing of Beverly Fulton, who passed away on July 5th. Uh, Beverly had served for several years as a board member of the Kansas City chapter. Um, from South Carolina, we received word through Deborah Canty of the passing of Dorothy C. Barksdale, otherwise known to Federationists as DOT, who passed away on Tuesday, August 16th. And I have to say, I had the uh, opportunity to be at the South Carolina convention where um, DOT was uh, memorialized and celebrated in so many ways. It was a real honor to be there for that. Uh, it's worth noting that uh, DOT was the first African-American member to join the National Federation of the Blind of South Carolina some 50 years ago. Uh, she served as an officer in, uh, and in many other positions uh, throughout the affiliate during her 50 years. Many knew her from national conventions or visiting uh, Rocky Bottom, participating at the Federation Center in, in South Carolina and, and so many other ways. So she will definitely be missed in our South Carolina affiliate and in other places. I have to share, uh, I learned at the, uh, at the convention uh, that uh, the phrase, the, the, the saying that she uh, most often quoted uh, was this, there are, good there are good ships, there are wood ships, uh, ships that sail the sea, but the best ships our friendship, and may it always be. So it speaks so much to all of the Federationists that we've lost, and so keep them in your thoughts and prayers. And finally, this is a really hard one, but uh, from Alabama or Michigan, depending on how you look at it, I am really sorry to uh, inform you of the passing of Alan Harris on August 10th. Uh, Alan uh, was uh, a giant in our movement. Uh, I first got to know him in 1996. He was the national representative to my first state convention. And my experience with Alan was like that of, of really thousands of people across the Federation. He was uh, dynamic, he was warm, he was welcoming, uh, firm, but gentle. He spent uh, time and served as a mentor to me and so many others. Uh, of course, uh, Joy Harris having passed in, in June, uh, the loss of Alan just shortly afterward is uh, really hard to take. And so I definitely encourage you to keep um, the Harris family and uh, the friends and the Federation members who knew and loved both Alan and Joy in your thoughts and prayers. I know it's a big, big impact on our Alabama Federation family. I think, Anil, those are the notes that I have for now. I'm going to turn it back to you. 
Okay, so if I could take a little moment of personal privilege. Uh, Alan was instrumental in my growth as well. I remember he came down to the Georgia affiliate when I was president and uh, really gave us the what for. Uh, he transformed his wrestling acclimate into leadership building. And uh, we both found out that we had a love for sweet tea and uh, not just sweet tea, diabetes, that's sweeter than sweet tea. Yeah, so he will be missed. And, and when I met Joy, it was the first time when I was in Iowa and she was raising funds selling chocolate covered nuts, walnuts, pecans, almonds, the whole deal. So they called her the nut queen. All right, so back to work, sorry. Uh, we have some poll results here and it looks like everybody was able to choose as many as they wanted. So let's see what we have here. So the first question was, uh, how do you plan to participate in Blind Equality Achievement Month? October is right around the corner. So it's like our largest one was 40, 41% in organized function with my chapter, which is a very good way to spend uh, Blind Equality Achievement Month. The others were 5% an activity plan for my place of work or school uh 18% an event in my community and 30% I don't have anything planned I guess I should get started yes what are you waiting on 30% get started second question what are you most looking forward to with fall starting soon let's see the big winner was I know yours was pumpkin size, I'm sure, Neil. <laughs> I'm sure that was your choice. No, but I know that that was Danielle McCann's <laughs> and probably most of the other uh, communications team, et cetera. <laughs> Let's see. I was trying to see the largest one, but I don't see the order. But let me just take them in order then. The first one was 26% football. I used to think that that's the guys chiming in, but On I Wisconsin. know more, more females now that are football fanatics. Oh, my goodness, yes. Oh, here we are. 46%, which I agree with, cooler weather, amen. Summer is not over. That is a lie if you step outside. 3%, school starting. That means that there's not a lot of parents that answered this poll, because I'm gonna tell you, when, when my younger one, yeah, that would've been the top winner for me. 19% was the pumpkin spice, and all the crew I learned from Stephanie Cascone, what is it, PSL. So that's, that's pumpkin spice latte. I guess it really should be PSE, pumpkin spice, everything here. And remarkably enough, 2% people said raking leaves. Uh, have fun with that. I'll let you have it. <laughs> President Cabono, are you ready to answer some questions? Oh, of course, yeah. All right, excellent. As let long me... as I don't have to rake leaves. <laughs> That's one advantage of having a cement yard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, I'm behaving. <laughs> All right, let me put those out here while I pull up the other questions. So this one came in just recently through the Q&A. Um, does the NFB have any plans for supporting training of NVDA, the free screen reading application? Uh, so uh, it's a good question. Uh, of course, we support uh, NVDA, we're, we're for it. Uh, we've given feedback to the developers many times. Um, we really don't do training on screen readers as an organization, uh, certainly our, um, Technology Trainers Division uh, has people that do training. Uh, we tend to uh, run programs through our Center of Excellence to expose people to what the options are uh, and make resources available. So really training on screen readers is not something we do, um, but I would encourage you to tap into the community uh, of blind people who uh, have developed resources in this area. And definitely, if you're looking for resources, call on our Access Tech Trainer Division. They would uh, be best suited to help you find resources. Great question, not something we've really delved into. Uh, if we took on trying to train all blind people in technology, we'd have a lot of work to do. So what we try to do is spearhead best practices for um, raising the expectations on training. But uh, it's something we'll look at. We'll talk to our, our, uh, our group and uh, see what new possibilities there are. Sounds great to me. And let's take advantage of our live studio audience here. Uh, I believe Stephanie agreed to be the runner. I, I think we have some live questions. So we'll wow, take a couple of those. Is, and this then is the first, I think. 
of live questions? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think so. All right, so this is a step Well, that we've the... taken it from a live audience member. Oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll see if they have the stuff that, take, that it takes. This seminar is still in the making, so yeah. we'll see if they can step up to the three strikes seminarians. Uh, Stephanie's going to run the microphone, and I believe Carmen had a question for you, sir. Hi, Mr. President. This is Carmen Badella from the Southern California chapter. And I just wanted to ask you if you could give some advice to a chapter that we're developing called Poder y Movimiento, which is the first Spanish chapter in California. And if you could just share some wisdom and some advice about maybe priorities or some things that we could focus on in the near future, we would really appreciate that. So great question and uh, applaud the effort to do new organizing in a, in a dynamic way in our California affiliate. Yeah. So when uh, organizing a, a chapter, um, the, the first thing is really to uh, make sure, number one, that you're coordinating with the state affiliate to get the guidance from the leadership there about the development of the chapter. The second thing is to get uh, the new members that are gonna make up the establishment of this new chapter grounded in the federation uh, individuals have to know what it is they're joining <laughs> what are we trying to build and in order to know what you're trying to build you have to have some understanding of um, the organization so there's many ways to do that of course reading literature having people come speak to a group oftentimes uh, before chapters are formed a group of people will get together uh, periodically, uh, maybe a couple times a month to really start understanding the philosophy. Also visiting other chapters. What is it that chapters do? To get the understanding that chapters uh, are local communities to help support the work of the state affiliate as a whole, right? To contribute to that broader state affiliate and uh, as an extension of the state affiliate to support the work of the national organization. So I would encourage uh, visiting some other chapters and uh, getting to know from those chapters what has worked and what hasn't. So I would, before setting out, you know, a lot of grand priorities about changing the local community and this and that, which all need to happen, start with just really understanding the nature of the National Federation of the Blind and the importance of blind people working together to self-determine the future. Uh, because there's a lot to take on and we can't accomplish it all in the first year. So we need to build a core of folks that wants to uh, work together uh, over a, a period of time. And the last thing I'd say about that is um, have fun, right? Because the way that chapters get built and stick together is they get to know each other. It's not transactional, you're just coming to a monthly meeting. You're getting to know people. The reason we come back to chapter meetings is we're invested in the other people who are there. So get to know each other, uh, get to know what uh, the hopes and dreams are, what are the unique talents uh, that people have and how can they contribute to the chapter? Great question. Yeah, well said, well answered too. I'm gonna to take one from the uh, email list um, this individual says, in past conventions, we've made the exhibitors list available to all the contact information. They want to know if we have plans for doing that because they haven't been able to find that list. Well, that's a great question. Um, I'm sure we do intend to make it available. Uh, um, I have not looked since I didn't know the question was coming, but I would go, <laughs> I would start with nfb.org slash convention and uh, look for it there. And if you cannot uh, find it there, I would encourage you to send an, uh, an email to outreach at nfb.org. We'll definitely help get that list to you if it's not uh, available at uh, nfb.org slash convention. Right, sounds great. We'll take another one from our live studio audience. I believe Tira had a question for you, sir. Good evening, Mr. President. Oh, we'll get you on the mic. Then. You need that microphone. Good evening, Mr. President. There she is. This is Tara Morgan. Um, I just wanted to ask, what is the best way to get some of our chapters to really focus on um, the growth and pulling in younger members to continue the legacy of our affiliates and our chapters? Well, uh, it's an age-old question, I guess. I think the 
uh, a mentoring program can be an important way um, to help uh, our me chapter members understand that they have something to offer. It's not just uh, that we want to bring young people into the chapter to push people out of the way. We actually want mentoring, right? We want uh, people who have been members, who have been contributing to pass on that knowledge, that expertise that they've had. Um, so a mentoring program can be a great way to do that. Um, training people on what it means to be a member, how they can welcome people in. But another way would be to uh, create an incentive program for uh, people to bring uh, new members to the chapter. Um, you know, the, every time someone brings a, a new uh, person to the chapter, maybe they get entered into a drawing for something mm -hmm. or, um, I mean, I think incentivizing the idea that we, we, need, we need new people and we, not just, we, we don't want them just to come, but we need to invest, it, invest in helping them understand the organization. Um, so another way could be to um, set up a, a youth group mm -hmm. that would be part of a chapter. For example, in the greater Baltimore chapter, uh, for a while, um, at least on chapter Saturdays, we had a transition uh, program that happened usually after the chapter meeting, I think it was. Um, but we were able to pull those young people into the chapter meeting. One time we even let them run the chapter meeting. <laughs> I know people were, How'd that go? People, it, it was great. <laughs> okay. It was great. It was not a conventional chapter meeting. I'm letting you know, <laughs> but it was good. It was great. You know, they, they, uh, you know, they got training, they nice. observed. And then, you know, we told them the essential things to do. Um, obviously the chapter planned it at a time when, you know, there wasn't a lot of uh, heavy business or debate to do, but they, they set the program, they ran the meeting, they planned the, you know, collection of money for PAC and that sort of thing, yeah. but they got to do it in their way, right? And it, it was done respectfully because they understood the importance of the chapter, but they also got some ownership in running it. So there's lots of things you can do. And uh, I'm sure many people have other creative ideas um, that we can share across our chapters. It's a good opportunity, I guess, to call out our chapter president's listserv where our mm. uh, chapter leaders could be sharing ideas about how to do this. Nice, nice. We're gonna go back and forth. So I'll take another question from the email list. Um, what are some of the ways the chapters and affiliates can help with the situation in Jackson, Mississippi? So, uh, you know, our, um, our hearts definitely go out to uh, the people in Jackson, Mississippi, dealing with the, the water uh, situation there. Uh, like with so many situations, I think we don't know yet. Obviously our uh, affiliate and our chapter in Jackson will continue to um, you know, reach out to blind people uh, where there are needs. If they identify them, I'm sure that uh, the affiliate will let us know. A lot of times in these situations that the needs don't really emerge uh, right away. Um, I do know that uh, our chapter uh, there has good communication and um, uh, I'm sure they will let us know if there are ways that the Federation family can be of assistance. Nice. So we'll take another question here from our audience. So Liz, I believe you have a question. Hi. Um, thank you. This is Liz Weiscarver from Houston. And um, President Riccobono, I just wanted to ask if you have any advice or suggestions for chapters that are planning events for the October Blind Equality Achievement Month and what kind of events people might plan to do. Blow them away. That's what I say. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, think, I think anything that... Uh, that the chapter uh, members are uh, motivated by and that helps raise the profile of the organization and our philosophy um, in local communities is great. I mean, don't take on an activity just because it sounds like the right thing. If no one in the chapter wants to do it, it's not going to inspire people to understand blindness differently, right? So, um, you know, our chapters are diverse. They're uh, they, they come up with great ideas based on what's happening in the local community. 
um, it, just to go back to, to my home chapter here uh, in, in Baltimore, uh, is planning to um, hand out water during the uh, Baltimore Running Festival. This is one of the biggest events that happens in town. It gets thousands of runners. Uh, what a great way to be visible, uh, do something fun, and um, you know, get the name of the organization out there. And in this case, we're not raising money, but at least it sets the stage for you know, another time our name will be more out there. So it really depends on uh, the chapter, what the priorities are. The important thing is that we're building awareness of the organization, opportunities for blind people, and, and really engaging people uh, in the community. And certainly in this case, like in Baltimore, people aren't gonna expect to see blind people out there passing out water. So I think <laughs> it's pretty cool. Yeah, we should have a video of people running up, seeing the blind people hand them water. That would be a really good uh, B-roll to have around. <laughs> there you go, there you go. I have another question from email. I'm gonna summarize it, but there's an individual who has a new boss at their current job that wants to remove some of the accommodations they've been used previously in order to save the company money. So they want this person to try to explore some less expensive uh, ways of making the job accommodation. She wants to know if this is right, if there's someone she can turn to to help her with this. What do you have for her, sir? <laughs> well, I, I think um, uh, employment situations are always tricky. Mm -hmm. um, but I would uh, uh, maybe see if you can come to an understanding that uh, with the person that there are lots of um, things around the office that are helpful to the employees that aren't being suggested to be taken away. For example, if we had fewer lights, the, the organization would save money. I love it. But uh, many people in the office need the lights. Um, but I think when you put it to them like that, you know, understanding that this is something that is contributing to the productivity uh, of the employer. And um, certainly we should always be looking, all of us, for better ways to, to do things. But um, I, I think. Um, you know, to be singled out, you should you should have the conversation um, with your boss to say, look, this is an important part of uh, my adding value uh, to the company. You may be saving money in one area, but you're going to make it um, less effective for me to be part of the team and therefore um, help the organization. So these are it's a complicated question to ask answer because of course i don't know all of the circumstances the players but um, what i would say is um you know consider um networking with people in your affiliate as well to get some some ideas and uh, of course if need be some advocacy support and i guess on that advocacy support piece um i would continue to to have the conversation and not be confrontational but i would follow up all of those conversations uh, with an email or, or some way that you can document it to say, I just wanted to recap what I was trying to communicate in our meeting today so that it sounds, uh, you know, it's not confrontational, but you're creating documentation that if there is a situation down the line, you at least have it in writing. So often we hear from blind people who face discrimination and you say, well, did, did you document it? And they say, well, well, no. <laughs> and then it's really hard for us to help do something. Good point, good point. I'm gonna go back to our studio audience. Uh, Corey, I believe you have a question. Yes, um, good evening, I'm President um, Rick Abono. Um, this is Corey Brooks from Savannah, Georgia chapter. Um, I wonder, um, I wanted you to explain to the people of how it's important to have more non-sighted members in your chapter than um, sighted members? Well, uh, we're, in, we're an organization of the blind and um, therefore our uh, constitution at all levels requires that at each level of our organization, it is majority uh, controlled, run by blind people. And so uh, that includes our local chapters. Our local chapters has, have to have 
uh, a, a majority of their members be blind. And if the majority of the members are not blind, a, a local chapter would be in violation of uh, federation uh, policy and uh, a, a state affiliate board could decide, uh, should decide really, to do something about it. And, and that could include reorganizing the chapter. Um, it's not that non-blind individuals aren't welcome in our, our organization, they are. We have uh, an, an, a number of members who are, are great contributors to our movement, but we're here for blind people. Our organization, the most important word in our name is of. And so uh, we have to, in order to be authentic to our mission, our constitution, our values, our brand, we have to be uh, run by the will of blind people. And so um, one way, if, if a chapter does get into a situation where you have a number of individuals who are not blind, who wanna be members, I mean, they can be in some chapters, uh, there's a provision for associate members where they can participate in the chapter, they just don't have voting rights and um, that can make the numbers right. But, you know, if your organization locally is not being run and operated by a majority of blind people, I would say it's not in keeping with the values of the Federation and we should, we should think about it. Great. We'll see if there are any more questions from the audience, but I wanna ask a personal question. Oh man, okay. <laughs> That's the only reason I decided tonight, the man. only reason I decided to do this is because I have the mic and I can <laughs> No, you God bless you. You have been reelected this past convention. So you've had uh, many years of experience in this role uh, underneath your belt. I'm just curious, uh, based on the way that I know you, you are your own worst critic and you're always self assessing based on your previous experience in the office of president. Where do you see yourself really focusing on getting President Rick Obono to grow more? Oh man, you see, none of these questions I get ahead of time. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I think um, uh, the the biggest um, uh, the, the the biggest growth opportunity. Uh, it, it's it's so hard, right, to to disconnect the organization from the personal. Um, the biggest thing that we're taking on is the development of the Museum of the Blind People's Movement. Uh, it's a big project. Uh, it's a big idea. Um, and it's, uh, well, to keep it clean for the live audience, it's scary. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's really scary. Yeah. Um, but um, it's, it's important. And so, you know, when I think about it, for me, it's challenging me to organize uh, the work differently so that I can uh, make sure I'm prioritizing um, the right things. Uh, it's stretching, you know. Uh, I sat with a uh, uh, partner of the Federation, uh, said, you know, I, I, I need a half a million dollars from you. Uh, by the way, they, pony, they, they committed to half a million nice. dollars. Nice. Uh, I went to another partner and said, um, I know you can't do this, but I need, we need your help getting a million dollars out of uh, this organization. Uh, they said they would help. Now, that's gonna require a lot more meetings and uh, asking for a million dollars and, and knowing that some people are gonna say no, right? And then once you get the money, making sure we do something that is really in keeping with the spirit of this big idea. Yeah. So I think um, it's the, taking it to the next level, right? I mean, there's still so much core work that we have to do and that work continues, but it's having those bigger projects to work on that really challenges continuing to grow the skill set. And I guess the other thing I would say is um, getting groups of Federation members together like this leadership seminar is part of the continued um, growth because people ask new questions. And you're like, oh, what do you do with that, you know? So, yeah, yeah. yeah. good question. Well, I, I love the fact that you uh, continue to push yourself despite all you're going through and you will always have my love and respect and uh, commitment to being shoulder to shoulder with you in this fight. Uh, the key is to always leave them wanting more. 
I know there's other questions, but I'm gonna have to segue uh, because another thing I really appreciate in the talent that you have is you, sir, are the master of the reveal. <laughs> now, since I have no idea <laughs> where uh, it's gonna happen, I'm just standing in for Pam Allen, maybe she knows, but there's supposed to be a presidential release live on site somewhere, and I think you're gonna acknowledge that. But before I, I give up this microphone, I do wanna thank all of you uh, who tuned in to the appropriate presidential um, performance this evening. Uh, there was a competing uh, president uh, for our release, and I'm glad that you chose to be with us this evening. So, sir, I'll leave it to you to let everyone know uh, where our next uh, presidential release will be broadcast. Yeah, thank you. And uh, you can read CNN to see what President Biden says. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> well, I think that is all that I have for this presidential release, except that before we get to the customary endings, we do need to tell you about our next presidential release and presidential release live event. We got more than a dozen submissions um, from chapters and affiliates across the country. And it was a really hard uh, set of proposals to, to go through, weighing many options. Um, and all Pam Allen and I uh, looked at it along with uh, members of our communication team, really hard to decide uh, where to go. One thing that's clear is that we do need to take the presidential release live on the road more often because uh, there really is a lot of excitement about continuing to build the Federation and taking advantage of these opportunities. So we're going to find ways to do that. And I encourage you as you find opportunities that might be good for the release uh, hosting in the future, please write to us uh, with those ideas with enough time for us to potentially plan for it. So thank you to all the chapters and affiliates who did submit uh, great proposals. I'm sorry we can't be in all of the places uh, at the uh, same time. I have invited though the uh, chapter president at the location that will be hosting our presidential release live on October 1st and so if our chapter president is there, I would turn it over to you to introduce yourself. Hello, Federation family. My name is Dr. Lashana Fant. I am the chapter president in Jackson, Mississippi. We will host the October 1st live presidential release here in the capital city of Jackson, Mississippi. We are thrilled to kick off Blindness Equality Achievement Month here in the City of Seoul. You can access the live presidential release through Zoom, the Nation's Blind YouTube channel, our internet stream, and by asking Amazon to open, by asking your Amazon device to open Nation's Blind. You can contact President Riccobono at 410-659-9314 or emailing office of the president at nfb.org. On behalf of this hospitality state, I say thank you. <laughs> the presidential release is going to the SIP. How about that? <laughs> nice. Uh, Very nice. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Fant, and I know that uh, our hearts uh, do go out uh, uh, to you and, and all of our members in Jackson, and uh, I know that you'll let us know if there's something we can do to help, but I'm looking forward uh, to being there on October 1st. Really exciting. So thank you for being with us to make the announcement. Um, that's why I was kind of surprised when the Jackson question came up earlier. So I think with that announcement, that exciting announcement, that's what I have to offer for this presidential release. I'm looking forward to the next one in October, but we got a lot of great work to do this month before we get there again. Please take the time the week of September 19th to fill out the strategic plan survey for the Federation. And with that, I'll leave you with our customary endings by saying, let's go build the National Federation of the Blind. Hi, I'm Oriana Riccobono, and I have two jokes for you. Why did the new student steal a chair? 
Why? Because the teacher told him to take a seat. Wow. What did one calculator say to the other calculator? You really pressed my buttons? <laughs> no, you can always count on me. Oh. I'm Elizabeth Figurbano, and I'll be telling you one joke. Why do ghosts make good school mascots? I don't know. Why do ghosts make good school mascots? Because they have a good school spirit. Oh, you know what? I was in South Carolina this weekend at the NFB meeting. And you know what they told me? You know what they told me they use down there to polish their furniture? What? NFB Pledge. The preceding message was brought to you by Mark Riccobono, President, National Federation of the Blind. Office of the President at nfb.org. 410-659-9314. www.nfb.org. Let's go build the National Federation of the Blind.